I played 100 days of Coral Islands 1.0 full release. A huge thank you to Stairway Games for sending me a little bit of early access so I could really dive in and explore all that you can do in Coral Island in 100 days time. Now I've played Coral Island in early access, but I've been a more casual player. So this is definitely a first look style 100 days. I'm definitely not perfection mode. I'm definitely not professional. And in my 100 days, I really wanted to just have a good time and experience the 1.0 build. But I also gave myself some challenges. Those challenges are the following. Number one, I really wanted to get to the Merfolk Kingdom. I wanted to see what the Merfolk were all about. Number two, I wanted to complete all four of the different mines, making it all the way to the bottom level. Number three, I wanted to increase my town rank all the way to rank C. I wanted to attend every single festival that occurred between day one and 100. I wanted to actually decorate my farm a little bit. I didn't want to leave it to all be just trash. And dare I say most importantly, I wanted to test out the romance and I wanted to get married to the one NPC of my choosing by the end of the 100 days. And for the sake of the video and for the sake of the challenge and for the sake of this video being done in the span of four days time, I am playing this game on the fastest day speed, which equates to roughly about 20 to 30 minutes per day. And this goes without saying, but there will be spoilers in this video. So if you don't want to see what could happen in 100 days of Coral Island, why'd you click on the video? That's... That's what it is. That's what it's gonna be. And without further ado, let's get into 100 days of Coral Island 1.0. <laughs> Day one of Coral Island started with me trying to be the hottest farmer in town, of course, naming my farm Sloth Stables as my affinity for Sloth never, never is not included in a farming sim game. And then I made my grand entrance via chicken boat. I do think this is perhaps the most efficient way to get around and I do wish I had a chicken boat in real life, but regardless, here I am making my way to Coral Island and, and Starlet Town. Coral Island is the island, Starlet Town is the town. Regardless, I met Mayor Connor, who's the sweetest dude, and then he took me to my home, which actually, I think by itself, is quite adorable. Not adorable is my giant farm full of trash, so I immediately started picking up trash and getting to work. I was also gifted a couple seeds to start out with, namely turnips, and I think those are daisies. And I did a cute little nine by nine situation, not worrying too much about what the farm looked like. Let me just plant these seeds and then I have other stuff to do. So I cleaned up a little bit more before I decided to visit Sam, who is the general store owner, and I decided to get to know him. And he told me, cute, now get to know other people instead. And I had to meet 30 different NPCs. Now this is actually not the total amount of NPCs, but I made sure to say hi to Derek, the hot construction worker that doesn't stay for long, as well as some other hotties in town. And then I had enough materials to already upgrade my house. And to my surprise, you can actually choose a style of your house right at the first upgrade, which was so exciting to see. I, of course, chose the kind of cottagey blue one because I feel like it kind of represents my aesthetic. It's a bit rustic, but pops of color, namely this lovely blue, is something that I really liked. So we had this cute little moving montage of me getting my house ready, and then I ditched that to go exploring. I found some candy tree seeds to give me a bit more energy because I've totally exhausted myself. Then I went back to Sam's because I neglected the first time to actually purchase some more seeds. Now, because I'm broke, I didn't buy that many. I bought some potatoes as well as some carrots, but I didn't have enough carrots to do the nine by nine plot. So I decided to save them for later because it would bother me too much to not have it be even. And that was my very first day in Coral Island. I made so much money. Day two of Coral Island, I was still kind of making my way around town, getting to know everything in the game. I took care of my crops for the first time. I did some cleanup. And this was the first day I started finding coffers and geodes around which was super fun. And then I decided to go out on the town and pick up some forageable items and meet my backup boyfriends. 
Here you can see I'm meeting Raphael, and I even decided to gift him something that he hated. But it was okay, I had some stuff for him to process for me anyway, so maybe we'll get along more later. I also met another one of my backup boyfriends, and then Charles is not a backup boyfriend, but it was there that I learned I needed to craft a flower bouquet. Then I went to look at the cute doggies that I couldn't afford yet, and I decided to gather some flowers for the flower bouquet. I crafted the bouquet, but I couldn't find anyone I wanted to give it to quite yet, so I decided to hold on to it. But I did find my way to the black market. Couldn't afford anything, but it was nice to window shop and dream about being rich. And that is pretty much all I did on day two. Day three was our first day of rain and our first day of mail, which was from Sunny and Eleanor, who told me to visit the beach shack because they had some stuff for me. Because I didn't have to take care of my crops because it was raining, I struggled with what to do for the first few minutes. And then I decided, oh, you know what? Let me go buy some carrots. Just kidding. Carrots didn't happen because they were closed. So I decided to give my backup boyfriend, Scott, the lovely flower bouquet I crafted the evening prior. He loved it and our backup romance is setting off. Then I decided to go to the shack as requested and I had a cute little cutscene with Eleanor and Sunny who were fighting over if they should give me both a fishing net and a bug net. I chose fishing, but then they decided to give me both anyway, which was so very kind of them. But I will say I am definitely more of a fisher person than a bug catching person. So I went right out by the chicken boat to start fishing. And lucky me, my first fish was a barracuda, which was pretty cool. I went back home to go ahead and plant some wild seeds that I found because I couldn't buy my carrots. And then I did some late night foraging and struggled with my inventory. So I did sell everything that I had so far. And I also crafted a chest to start storing some of my stuff. And that's pretty much all I did on day three. Day four started with me tending to my crops and finally going to get my carrots. Just kidding, the world doesn't want me to have carrots. I was interrupted by a very important cutscene where I got to meet Pufferfish for the first time and our girl, Karen a drilling company that has just moved to Starlet Town. Everybody mad. Nobody, not a soul is happy about them being here. Um, so much so that everyone caused a commotion in town. But I stayed because I'm nosy and I want to see what's up. And at this point, I realized in my entire time in early access, I never attempted to go into this building. I don't know if you could have gone in this building, but you bet I went in the building now. And I went into Pufferfish and saw that it is a cold, but very kind of like luxurious office. And I'm not going to lie. I wanted to see what was up, but I didn't really find anything to interact with other than Reyna, who is absolutely stunning. I did a little bit of exploring, wondering if Karen was going to ask me to like join her cult or something like that. She didn't. So instead, I just poked around before I decided, OK, I'm going to go be an honest farmer. I want everyone to like me. So instead, I decided to introduce myself to backup boyfriend Waku, and I gifted him a nice little flower that he loved. Thank you for being my backup boyfriend. Finally got my seeds, decided to rummage through the trash like a little raccoon. And I saw that the museum was finally open, which is great because this is a great way to increase your town's rank. So I was greeted by backup boyfriend Scott, who was pacing around and he was looking upset. So he introduced himself to me as if we haven't already met, as if I didn't give him my flower bouquet. But he told me that the museum is empty. We used to have so many artifacts. And then he said he's heard some things about me. I guess I already have a reputation around town, but luckily it wasn't the kind of reputation I was worried about. He didn't know I've been dating all the boys. so. He just wanted me to get some stuff for him. I popped home, took care of the new seeds that I bought, and remembered that I actually had an artifact on hand to donate. So I donated that like the good person I am. Then I decided to do some fishing to get some more stuff for the museum. At first, it did not go well. I did forget, even though I love fishing in this game, it is difficult. It's a little tricky. And so I did struggle a little bit getting back into the swing of things, but then, you know, it, it got a little bit better or not. Just kidding. It did. I found Nemo and then I found another Barracuda. I don't know what's up with the Barracudas, but I keep finding them. I donated them because like I said, I'm a good person. And then I decided to do some late night foraging as you do, put all my stuff away. And that is what I got up to on day number four in Coral Island.
For day five, it was time for our leading man to make his grand entrance. Our main boyfriend, our target, the man who I will be marrying by day 100. Mark came over to my house and he told me that the mines were now open. He gave me instructions on how to get there. And I honestly wasn't even really listening. He is saying my garden rake won't help me. And the garden rake is like a thing with him. He's not in love with me yet. Right now, he thinks I'm just a farmer, but just he wait. That being said, I did need to do some farming stuff. So I did harvest my first crops and then I did buy some more seeds to replace those spots. You also saw I had a crow that I had to deal with that ate some of my crops, but I didn't have a scarecrow recipe. So we suffered and instead we went to the mines and the mines are my favorite parts of most farming sim games. So you know, I was ready to see the mines. Everything was like earthquakey in there and Kira came to my rescue. Thank goodness for her. Little does she know I am used to slaying monsters. Still, she introduced herself to me anyway and let me know that there shouldn't be monsters in the top levels of the mines because her and Mark cleared them out, but she gave me a sword and wanted to see how I did in the mines. So it was my new quest to make it to level five of the mines, which was easy, easy. I went in the mine and I said, watch, just watch. Okay, honestly, it wasn't easy because you have really low stamina at the beginning of the game, but I did see this cute little caterpillar monster, which was a new monster that we did not see in early access, and I was very excited. I also got quite a bit of resources. I was really happy to see I did get some gems. I got a little marble, as well as I started collecting some copper as well. And by the time I made it to level five, I had pretty much exhausted my energy. So the day pretty much ended there. I did some foraging afterward, and you could see I got the scarecrow recipe and leveled up a little bit. Day six, the hotties just keep coming to my door, though I do prefer Raphael to Pablo and Pablo let me know at the blacksmith shop that I can turn ores to bars and the bars I can use to upgrade my tools and so I kept that in the back of my mind as I had my first quest which was to make a furnace I didn't have the stuff to do that just yet so I tended to my farm and then I went right back in the mine to get everything I would need for the furnace I also forgot to mention that this is the earth mine that I'm in the mines in this game are separated by elements, so you have to do the earth mine first. I made it to level 10. I got this ring that lets my tools go faster, and then I had enough stuff to make my furnace. Didn't have enough stuff to make a bar, but I did a good enough job that Kira sent me a piece of mail, letting me know that the Band of Smiles, the guild that fights the monsters, were interested in me, and they gave me the quest to defeat 30 different monsters, and then after that, I had used up all of my energy for the day. So I remembered that you can actually kind of like stalk your favorite character and you can find where they are on the map. So I decided to visit Mark and give him my first ever gift, which was a tulip. He liked it. And our love story is setting sail. And that is what I got up to on day six. Day seven, some dude named Jeff Smith told me about the existence of fertilizer and gave me some to upgrade my crops and make them better and make me feel special. Then it was to the mines because I really wanted to get some more progress on working on the band of smiles. I only ended up killing 10 monsters out of 30, but I did get enough resources to make my first bars. Then I decided to check the bulletin board to run some errands and Pablo wanted a cute little flower. So I got some seeds, I upgraded my bag, and I remembered that doing errands for people gets me hearts. So I decided to prioritize that, work on my farm, upgraded some stuff, and that was day seven. Day eight started with some more mail, this time from Ling, who wanted me to meet her at the diving pier. But first I had to scare away a crow and have this cutscene with Mayor Connor that introduced the town ranking system. I got to see a flashback where Judge Ross was being a hater and gave Starlet Town the rank of F. Pretty much there was an oil spill that came in and completely just like ruined the town. And that is why Karen decided to move Pufferfish in. And I got to see a little bit of magic as well as be introduced to how I can improve my town rank, which is pretty much by doing things around town. Like 
donating to the museum, which you're seeing me do here. And I'm realizing that you can get actual rewards for donating to the museum. I also did my task with Pablo. Then I headed over to Ling who let me know the ocean has been neglected by everybody and she needs help healing different coral sites. So my task was to heal five coral sites. I only healed one, as you can see, and it took up a lot of my stamina, but I got to watch the pretty magic unfold for the first time. And I will say cleaning up the trash is very satisfying, but once my stamina depleted, I decided to leave. It was early in the day, so I got a green tea, and then I decided to go back to the mines. I know I should probably have stuck with diving, but I like the mines too much. So I was prioritizing that and that is how I spent the rest of day number eight. Day nine, Hadi Surya tells me all about the lab and using kelp I find while diving to make essences that can help me with my farm. Mayor Connor sent me a letter telling me there's a festival tomorrow and I remembered that shiitake mushrooms are Mark's favorite thing and I found that out in early access. Then I did a little bit of fishing did a little bit of donating and got my first reward for donating so many things to the museum, which triggered this cutscene with backup boyfriend Scott, who fantasized about the museum being something amazing. So he said, we're gonna start a Kickstarter campaign because Coral Island is from a Kickstarter campaign. And for the rest of the day, I worked on trying to get some items, I upgraded things, and I got my first ever heart with Mark. Day 10 started with magic and a letter from someone called Chieftain. I deal with that later, but first I realized that I had skill points to make different upgrades. Then right to the Cherry Blossom Festival, I talked to every person and Suki called me out saying, oh my God, you're talking to every person. I did a little shopping. I got this Cherry Blossom plant. Then after a quick practice round, I got going on my first mini game, which is the sack race. While I did good the first round, the second round wasn't for me. Then it was time for the main event where I had to donate something to the potluck. I decided to give them a piece of lettuce because that is about all I had. And from there, it was time to start the main event to see if our soup was good. Judge Ross once again was a hater and said that our soup was nothing special. Afterward, I got home and I realized I had tons of recipes from different NPCs, which was super sweet of them. And then I did not forget about Chieftain and some magic happened. Chieftain awoken something in me to be able to read the mysterious magical language that's been all around the island, as well as asked me to visit the goddess. Now, I didn't have time to do that this day, but we were getting the magic started and meeting Chieftain was really cool and interesting. So I got my third eye and I knew that I had to prioritize that the next day, stole some candied tree seeds and then headed to sleep. But of course I had to place my flower first and then I gained a heart with like nearly everybody. So it it pays off to talk to everybody at festivals, I guess. See Suki, it was worth it. Day 11, the farm thriving, Mark and I thriving, but I'm not just gifting things to Mark. I also gave this flower to Betty, which started this cutscene with her son Noah, where he took her out to do some stretching, but he couldn't stay for very long because he works very hard at the tavern and pretty much he couldn't spend as much quality time with his mom, which was very sad. But I moved on. I went to the goddess temple, found out about altars where I needed to donate resources to make some magic happen. Spent my whole day completing one of the altars. I got a recycling machine and I almost finished the second, but I was rewarded from the goddess with a potion that made me nearly throw up. And that unlocked the ability to start fast travel, which was very exciting. It also unlocked a second altar, which had some different fish and some bugs to catch. Pretty much this is like, if you've ever played Stardew Valley, this is kind of like the community center where I need to get different resources in game and contribute. Spend the rest of the day fishing, got an octopus, which wasn't something the goddess needed, but still pretty cool. And that was the day. Day 12, I've been doing bulletin board stuff and been doing a good job. Found the last piece I needed for the spring bundle before I headed to the mine, where Chieftain told me there is a giant I need to free at the bottom and they are a cute little earth giant I need to find. I did some monster slaying, then I headed over to the temple, gave the goddess all of my spring stuff, she rewarded me with some seeds, then I went back to the mine, this time to the Band of Smiles, where I was going to be officially initiated. Mark was still calling me Garden Rake and not sure about me, but I did meet some other NPCs, namely Axel, who it's a crime we cannot romance him, but whatever. Now that I'm in the Band of Smiles, I'm extra cool, I got that badge, planted my new seeds, donated some stuff, and really, I'm just working on trying to increase my town rank. 
Day 13 started with magic and a note from Sam asking me to come to the store. When I did, he told me he wants to sell more local produce and gave me the challenge of selling him a lot of bronze fruits and veggies. I ran into Millie who told me about merit points, which are points I get for helping people. Talked to Mark, he doesn't love me yet, but my pickaxe does because I've upgraded it to bronze. Since my pickaxe wasn't accessible to me, I decided to go to the ocean. I healed some coral sites because I have been neglecting this part of the game and it's important for your town rank. Also important, making machines. I made a compost machine, got some merit points, Got a heart from Macy for doing a bulletin board request and that was day 13. Day 14, I finally made the extractor Surya asked for and my farm was looking absolutely trashed. Realized that I hadn't been to the clothing store yet and was sad to find out that the hats covered your hair completely, which they didn't change from early access. I gave Mark too much love this week, so I visited my backup boyfriends and gave them some gifts and that was pretty much it. Day 15, I got my first sprinkler and harvested some crops. I gave Mark another mushroom because I know he likes it, as well as I finally got my upgraded pickaxe. Ran into a cutscene with the mayor and Sam, and the mayor was complaining about Sam's scarecrow decorations, which I found to be sad because I liked them. Worked on my farm, planting things, cleaning up, making resources, got merit points, lots of farm upgrades, and of course, a heart with Mark. Day 16, there was some magic that blessed my farm and made my potatoes grow faster. I was gifted a mayo machine and then I made my own mason jar so I could start making artisan goods so I could make some cash. Then I was going to dive, but I ran into Jim who was throwing rocks at the sea and he was reminiscing about his wife that passed away. He dropped a photo of her and it was my job to return it. But first, I had to heal some coral. I have been neglecting this part of the game, so I healed enough coral to accomplish my goal. I met up with Ling, who told me that they're using science and magic to save the ocean, and I upgraded my diving. Day 17, I gave Jim his photo back as promised, and then I spent the whole day in the mines. I even did some mine fishing, and I found Dory. And I got to level 28 before I nearly passed out, but I upgraded my mining and my fishing. Day 18, I had a lot of stuff for the blacksmiths to process and I've actually been doing this quite a bit and I knew that I needed to donate a lot of stuff because I'm trying to reach that donate 50 items for the museum thing that Scott asked me for. Other than the museum, which I have been working on, I decided it was time for a coop. So I got some wood and I decided let's do the coop before the barn and I realized where I wanted to place the coop was covered in trash. So I went to go ahead and clear that to place the coop but realized I took way too long to do that and it would have to wait for the following day. But I got merit points because I've been doing errands behind the scenes because I'm a good person. Day 19, I finished clearing the spot for the coop and then I actually placed it, though I had to wait a few days. I didn't have any mushrooms to give Mark, so I gave him a coconut and I gave one to Waku too. Then we did some fishing and I got some fun new fish that I offered to the goddess and I did some different fishing locations today and gave more to the museum, got a reward and got a heart with Waku. Day 20, I learned there's a tree planting festival tomorrow and backup boyfriend Noah was not excited about this, but I was excited to get back into the mines, got to level 27 before I completely ran out of energy. So I took a break to say hello to Mark and realized that while he volunteers at the animal shelter, I should probably use this opportunity to get to know the animals as well. So I said hello to them because I hadn't already. Then after a quick snack back to the mine, got to level 30 and I got some spikes. Then I realized I had quests in the band of smiles that I should probably look at and realized I'd never been to this cabin in the woods that sells random stuff. And that was the day. Day 21 was festival day, but first I had to celebrate my coop, tend to my farm, and I realized I'd never been to Ben's van, so I bought a scarecrow from him. Then we started the festival by taking a boat to these desolate woods that I found to be very beautiful still. Didn't buy anything at the shop because it was kind of all trash. Then I talked to everybody. I'm trying to get those hearts, especially with Mark. You need so many hearts before you can romance. And I only have 100 days to do it. Then I started the festival, which was a lot, a lot of work. It's, it's planting trees. But it turned out to be really cute and very satisfying. Then I went home, placed my scarecrow, Got tons of recipes, which are great, but I still can't cook, but that's okay. We'll get there. We'll get to the cooking at some point, maybe. Then I leveled up my foraging and I got so many hearts with so many people. Most notably, I got one for my boy, Mark, as well as many other of my backup boyfriends. Day 22 was chicken day. Three chicken to be exact. I decided to name them all after spices. So you got turmeric, ginger, and paprika. 
I gave them some love, welcomed them home before absolutely ditching them to get to the mine. I got to level 39 out of 40 before I ran out of energy, needed a snack, and on my way back, I was interrupted by what I've been waiting for, my first cutscene with Mark, who shushed me right away and told some cutie to come here. While I was threatened, I wasn't threatened for long because the cutie turned out to be an adorable little puppy, an adorable little stray that he was going to bring to the animal shelter. But first he would take her home to clean her up and he said a lot of really sweet stuff. Specifically, I love this bit of he defends the town from monsters all the time and it weighs on him. So it's really nice to have balance in his life and volunteering at the animal shelter helps him kind of find that. It helps him stay sane, which I thought was so cute. Then he told me to go home, but I couldn't because I needed to get to level 40 of the mine and it was so close, it only took a couple hits. And then I made it to the end of the earth mine, therefore unlocking the water mine. And I was greeted at level 40 with a little bit of a prize. I got some Jammu, which is a drink that gives you tons of energy. And this weird thing that I interacted with and a chieftain came on down and celebrated my success, but then immediately told me, get upstairs, we've got stuff going on. We went back upstairs and we saw the statue was missing and Grog, one of the giants, had come to life. We freed the earth giant, we celebrated, but it was time to keep going. So they immediately gave me the task of freeing the water giant, which I did not have time for on this day. So instead, I ended the day, got some merit points for the festival the day prior, leveled up my mining, and also I got an extra heart with Kenny because I did some kind of errand for him. Day 23, I got a note from Grog telling me to come to the giant village, but I'm a mother now and had to tend to my chickens and turn their eggs into mayo. I made my way to the giant village, but Grog told me I wasn't allowed to look at him opening the way, so he made me go stand off by myself and close my eyes. I opened them anyway, and I did see some magic happen and the way to be cleared. So now I can go to and from the giant village as I please. So we walked in, I got the tour of the place, and Grog not only showed me all of the houses, but this mechanic that allows you to enchant your tools. So using different artifacts, you can actually get some fun upgrades to your tools, like notably less energy drain from your scythe and things like that. Looking back at it, I should have used this mechanic way more, but regardless, it's fine. Then I made my way back into town and said hello to my other favorite guy, Mark, Gave him a shiitake mushroom and he noticed a statue was gone in the tavern. Because he was on to me, I fled for the ocean, did some diving, healed some coral until it literally kicked me out because I stayed up past my bedtime. But regardless, I gained some merit points for doing more errands and that was the day. Day 24, I went back to doing what I started the night prior and I dove the whole day. I only managed to heal eight coral sites out of the 20 I needed for my next goal, but I got tons of things to donate to the museum and I leveled up. Day 25, I realized that I forgot that this TV existed. I've never turned it on. It gives you shows about how to be a farmer. There's a detective show and there's also the weather channel. And honestly, I never use it again. And I also forgot skill points were a thing, so I upgraded a bunch of stuff before heading over to the blacksmith boys who had to open so many coffers for me. And I had so many things to donate at the museum. I was nearly at my 50 donation goal for the Kickstarter campaign. So I did some fishing and more fishing, gifted Mark his mushroom, of course, did some bug catching and fishing, and I got a heart with Mark and one for Yuri for doing an errand for her. Day 26 and I gave the goddess my chickens firstborns, aka their eggs, and I realized I must have been nice to Charles at some point because I got this cutscene with Sonny who was nervous to be at the doctor. I saw the sloth exam room chair, which was super cute, gave Mark too much love and attention this week, and I went diving because I wanted to get some more stuff for the museum and also progress that, but instead I ended up getting more stuff for the goddess, which worked out for me, and I got some merit points and a heart with Charles. Day 27, I started taking on the water mine and that's what I did literally the whole day. I caught a nice little eel and I made it all the way to level 10, got some tree seeds and made it to level 14 before it was my bedtime. Day 28 and God, I don't know when I was nice to Charles, but he showed up at my door asking me for fish. Um, for reasons is what he said and not to tell Millie I gave him fish and then I went fishing myself and I found not one but two rainbow fish which is great because I needed one for the goddess and also one for the museum to put me over the edge for my Kickstarter goal. 
Then when I was on my way to the museum, I ran into this cutscene with Yuri and Millie pretty much just saying Yuri works really hard at the doctor's office and she's got no time, which is sad. Then once again on the way to the museum, another scene I ran into. This one's all about Pablo and his brother who is not even named. And it's pretty much just everybody celebrating Pablo and completely ignoring Raphael. I'm pretty sure Connor, the mayor, is in love with Pablo at this point. And this is just really showing that um, everyone likes Pablo kind of more than his brother, which is really sad. I like his brother better. Then I finally got to the museum, donated my fish, and I finally got our 50 donations in. I got a sprinkler for my reward, and then Scott came running in to tell me, oh my god, we did the Kickstarter. This is amazing. Now, I was very aware of the fact this is the final day of spring, so I decided to get some machines in order, process some materials, and I realized I needed a lot more bronze ore than I had for literally anything ever. So I went back to the earth mine to get some more bronze ore because I knew I was going to need it for upgrades and things like that. So I did that and then when I got home, I pretty much just cleaned up the farm because the farm at this point was in shambles and I have not forgotten about my goal to make the farm look good by the end of this. So going into summer, I knew I needed to set myself up for success. So I did a little cleanup and summer, here we come. Day 29, the first day of summer, and we're greeted with a new guest. The lovely Nina is here for the summer. You can see Lily, and I'm realizing these are all NPCs I have not formally introduced you to. Um, anyway, Nina's new. Lily's been here, though. They're great. They're lovely. And Nina pretty much kicks off the whole season. Her grand entrance is the grand start to summer. So I got started by opening mail from Charles, who I guess is in love with me, and I cleared up my yucky wilted crops, saw everybody's cute new outfits. Like I never even paid Luke any attention and he looked cute. Then I got all of the new summer seeds that a poor little farmer could afford. I pretty much just tried to get everything. I end up planting every single seed I can get. It just takes a little bit of time. And then I decided to rework my farm. I still didn't have a scarecrow as good as the one I bought from Ben's shop. So I did my best and then I did foraging because there were brand new forageables. And I forgot that after the tree planting festival, I was gifted this tree. So I decided to make this little area by the coop where I'm going to put trees. And the goal was to get more trees than this. I also got a heart with Erica because I did something. Day 30 and I woke up to the news that the Kickstarter campaign was ready. So I needed to head to the museum, but I had plans of my own first. And those plans were very sharply interrupted by Kenny, who had a very important cutscene you need to remember for later. Kenny fully lets his cow run away. And then he's like, this has never happened before. Oh my God, she probably was just confused. Anyway, the reason I was going over there was because I wanted to make a barn. Now, stupid me didn't clear enough room for the barn next to the coop. So I did have to take a quick trip back to my farm to clear like, I think it was literally just this tree. And then I struggled with not sure if I put the barn right next to the coop perfectly. Regardless, I did my best. And then I got another cutscene. This one was about Anne finding this random possum that was sick and nursing it back to health. Great. Then yet another cutscene. This one was the one I was anticipating as I went into the museum and we got the whole Kickstarter campaign launch thing. I have to say Scott's summer outfit is full of fun and it did make me like him a little bit more. He did move up the backup boyfriend scale a little bit here with that fun outfit, I'm not gonna lie. And this is pretty much just saying the Kickstarter campaign is happening great. And that's pretty much all I did. I got a heart with Macy because I gifted her a flower and that's it. Day 31 and the Kickstarter campaign was already fully funded, which means the museum was gonna have a giant upgrade. And speaking of upgrades, the bathhouse, the hot spring was finally open, which the game didn't tell me, I just remembered. And that pretty much just gives you all of your energy back. So because I had so much energy, I spent the entire day diving. I dove until I literally could not dive anymore. And I healed 14 coral sites out of the 20 that I needed to do. And because of that, I increased my town rank, that in the museum. So because I became rank E, I got new seeds, new clothing, pet adoption can happen now, as well as tons of other stuff. There's some farm animals I was able to unlock. 
So it definitely made me realize that I should be prioritizing the ocean and the museum, and I got a bunch of hearts with tons of other NPCs because I have been talking and gifting to lots of people. Day 32 and I got a gift from Ling, which was an auto fertilizer. And honestly, Ling has a lot of really cool stuff at the lab, but I've been too broke for all of it. So I was excited to get that as a gift. I also got my barn, but I was too broke for a cow. So I decided to spend what little money I had on papaya tree seeds because I had a quest from Emma that would give me a lot of money if I gave her some papayas. Then I decided to go to the mine. I made it down to level 20 and I got an amber shield ring, which could potentially block some monster damage. And even though I didn't get cows, I did level up my ranching and my mining. Day 33, and the mayor lets me know there is an animal festival that is upcoming. So I went right to the community center and I was harshly interrupted by a cutscene with Mark, who I've completely forgotten about all summer long. And this is checking back in on the cutscene from before, where he brought the stray dog that he found to the community center. And he's trying to give her this special dog food, but she refuses. She like runs to the other side of the room, does not want it. And the dude is pretty much like, girl, you need this food, you need to have it. And she instantly throws it up as soon as she eats it. And then the cutscene continues because of the drama of it all. We go to Kenny's place and Kenny's like the main ranch dude in case you didn't know. And Kenny's like, Mark, she went into anaphylactic shock and Mark loses his mind because he pretty much forced this dog to eat this special food. Anyway, back to real life, I gave Mark an egg because I didn't have any mushrooms and he liked it, so it was fine. Then it was time for me to adopt a dog. I knew exactly which one I wanted because this dog looks exactly like my in real life dog. I decided to place his pet bed. I redid my room. I adopted my dog, named him Dexter after my real life dog. And then I spent the entire rest of the day fishing because I realized it's raining and there might be different fish for when it rains. But I was interrupted by the mayor who needed my help, like carrying this appliance and that was it that was the whole interaction he just needed some help and then back to fishing I did some more fishing and it paid off because I actually did upgrade my fishing and I also got a heart with Waku because I pretty much give him flowers every time I run by him Day 34 and I have a dog. That is the most important part of the day. This was so precious. The fact that the little pop-up says Dexter is now part of your family just Adorable. I love it. You can see him. He looks happy. Who else was happy? Me, that my summer crops were finally starting to happen. I haven't been showing them, but I have been indeed farming every single day in this game. After that, I decided to spend the rest of the day in the mine because I was falling behind on the water giant progress and also I'm broke and I need money. So I was hoping to find some more items that would make me some money. That didn't happen, but you know what did happen? I gained a heart with Dexter and that was the most important thing. Day 35, I had this really adorable cutscene with Millie where she's pretty much caught on to the lake goddess and she's been throwing grass into the lake. Well, now, flowers in hopes of summoning the goddess, which I thought was really sweet. After that, I went to the mine and I finished the water mine all in one day. I got explosives and Jammu for completing it. And I got to set free Gong, the water giant who was so sweet. And they immediately told me to do the wind giant next. And I didn't have time for that today. Day 36, I made karacha sauce for the first time, got a cow named Rosemary, and of course, I had to get a pail to milk her as well. But I was really leveling up my artisan goods, my ranching skills. She really is farming. At some point, I also upgraded my scythe. Forgot to show you, but I celebrated my new bronze scythe by diving. I healed a lot of coral before it was time to call it a day and go back to visit my brand new cow, make sure she had food and make sure I was, you know, actually farming. And that was all I got up to on that day. Day 37, I am greeted with sunflowers for the first time and it made me so very happy. And I got the first ever gallon of, gallon? I don't know how much milk. I got milk from my cow. I didn't forget about Mark and I've been giving him stuff. I gave him my karacha sauce and then I headed right down to the ocean. And today I made progress. I finally got this giant root to move away. And upon further investigation, it was finally time to meet the merfolk. We have a gung and my girl Denali who cannot understand me. I cannot talk to them at this point because we speak a different language, but they're pretty much like, oh my God, we've seen this person messing with our stuff. We gotta go. So they leave. 
but I don't leave. I actually stay and do a little bit more diving today. And now that I'm further in the ocean, I get some fun new things like silver kelp and Ling totally knew what was going on the whole time. She totally knows about the merfolk. I upgraded my farming and my diving, and I got a new heart with Scott too. Day 38, it was time to start the wind mine. And each mine has a different kind of ore in it. The first one bronze, then silver. Now that we're in wind, we're getting gold ore, which means it's time to be rich. It was also time to do a little bit more offering as well and sell all of my gold, make some money and level up. Day 39, I was met with Ling, who wanted me to come to the lab as she's made me a brand new diving suit that lets me talk to the merfolk. My grandma sent me some stuff. I did my summer bundle for the goddess. My chickens produced way too many eggs, upgraded my silver pickaxe, and I was being productive today. I also had a cutscene with Eva, the baker who needed help baking some bread. And I bought some more seeds because I'm in my money-making era here in Coral Island. And I also got a heart with Pablo and Walter, who I did some quests for. Day 40, and it was time for the Animal Festival, which I'm gonna be honest, is probably the best festival out of all of them. I didn't buy anything from the shop because I was too broke. And Connor trolled me and said I couldn't participate, but I realized it was just a bug and I was able to participate. But I went and talked to everybody else first, including my guy, Mark, who watched me as I rode this bull. He is like front row watching me do this bull riding thing. And I ended up doing pretty okay until I fell flat on my face in front of him, but whatever. I came in second place and then I found out I actually beat Mark at that game. So that was pretty cool. And then I moved on to the chicken fight um, where it, it is exactly that the two chickens fight each other. And I did win in the first battle. And I don't know how I, I had no idea what I was doing. Paprika, my chicken, really did it. But in round two, I went up against Mark's chicken, Belle. And this was some pretty stiff competition. It was so, so very close. But Paprika got a little bit starstruck by Belle and they did beat us, but we still did pretty okay. Now, then we did the cow racing and Rosemary, my cow, she wasn't in the mood to race. Overall in Coral Island, the mini games are fun, but I am bad at them. So after my brutal loss with Rosemary, well, technically we came in third. It still felt like a brutal loss. The most brutal of all the losses was the actual pet race. And me and Dexter just couldn't get it together. Just like in real life, Dexter, this Dexter just wanted to do his own thing. And we did come in last. But I did get merit points and a lot of hearts and foraging upgrades with so many people. Like, look at all those people that love me because I talked to them. Day 41, I learned that sprinklers are important and I should probably make them. I also grew a lot of corn and I gave some to Noah for a quest. And then I ran into this cutscene where Nina had gotten a jellyfish sting and Surya was going to pee on her. But Shame walked in and was like, don't do that. We can use vinegar and she'll be fine. She will live. And so she lived. But I didn't live when I saw Mark in his swimsuit. I gave him some corn and it felt like none of it was real. I cannot even believe that swimsuit. I also gifted some other people like Surya. And then I ran into this cutscene with Ben, Bree, and Luke. And Bree and Luke run the vineyard and they're kind of like fancy richer people. And Ben, you know, he's just running his shop. They invite him out for like a fancy dinner at their place. And he's talking about how he has to sell his stuff first. They're kind of like roasting him a little bit. I come over and help, but I don't even get invited to dinner. Whatever. Then I run into another cutscene. Somehow the monsters got out of the mine. And of all people, Zara was the one to come and help me. Now, Zara's not in the Band of Smiles, so I was really excited to see her engage in some combat. And she totally saved my butt and saved the day. And I appreciate her so much. Then I went into the mines. Didn't get very far, but I did get quite a bit of gold, which was kind of my goal for the day. I only made it to level 12 but I did get enough gold to, you know, make me a little bit richer. And I got merit points, leveled up my combat, and I got a heart with Leah and with Mark. Day 42 and Noah needed some fresh flowers to the tavern. And along my way, I saw Archie dancing with a ghost, but it wasn't really a ghost. It was really Gong the giant. And apparently dogs and children can see the giants as well. 
um, and Gong was sad no one else could see him. Then I made my way to the tavern and I interrupted a very sad cutscene, which using my context clues, it seems as though they're planning the funeral of Betty's husband and Noah and Frank's father. Um, and she's like, no, this isn't the right time. Is it the right time? I'm not really sure. And then I came back later and I was going to give Frank the flowers that Noah asked for, but he was like kind of roasting me. He was like, I didn't know we were behind the register buddies. And then him and Noah got in a big fight because they weren't going to pay me for the flowers. And Noah was like, no, of course we need to pay, pay for the flowers. So it was a whole weird interaction. I got out of there as soon as I could. And I realized I hadn't bought any fruit trees yet this season and summer was nearly over. So I planted my fruit trees. I ended up getting a heart with Frank anyway. Way, but Frank, I don't want your heart. Day 43 and I almost fell over when I read this letter that was from an anonymous person that asked me to meet them at the beach tomorrow night. Now this could only mean one thing. I have five hearts with Mark and like nobody else so I thought that this was going to be our moment, but I couldn't focus on it too much. So I got a duck, I named him Time, and I explored the ocean a little bit. And I pretty much just did the entire day doing that, sold some more artisan goods and made some new friends. Day 44, and it's like Scott knew I had a date with Mark later because today was the day the museum was finally ready and we finally got to see the Founders Hall. So this cutscene made me nervous because I thought I would miss my date, but luckily I didn't. And oh my goodness, this is so crazy because these are actually like the real life Kickstarter supporters for Coral Island. If they backed a certain tier, they got to be a part of this Founders place. So there are real statues for the real people. And I thought that was so cool. Then I had this cutscene with Scott and I decided Scott is my number one choice for backup boyfriend because I think Scott is actually very sweet and I really enjoyed this whole museum arc with him and from this interaction I also got the opportunity to start discovering fossils. I went back home, I had some mail, the giants wanted some stuff for me and I realized the whole meet me at the beach thing was delayed a day so I didn't have to worry about it. When I got to the giants village, Gong and Grog had this idea where they wanted to disguise themselves as a human so they could go and hang out in the human village and they needed some stuff for me but we sit on that for a while. I decided to then go get a sheep because one of the things they needed was wool, named her Cinnamon, then I hung back out in the Founders area for a while to get to know some of the names, and that's how I ended the day. Day 45, and I ran into a cutscene with Kenny and Kira, and he found this old scroll and is starting to catch on to the magic going on in Coral Island. But let's be real, the real magic is between me and Mark. I gave him a banana as a little pre-present for our date later, and then found out that he was actually looking for a task on the board of smiles. So I got that for him, and then I decided to wait for our date by enjoying the wind mine. Then I made my way to the diving spot just west of it for our date, for our moment. And okay, so it wasn't a date and it was Suki and Ben who wanted to watch the sunset with me. And I was disappointed. So the day ended there. Day 46 and I upgraded my seeds at the lab, though I didn't understand how this worked until fall, to be honest. But then I had the most meaningful interaction I've had with Mark, where I complimented the scar across his face. And he said, and I quote, flirting, are you garden rake? And then he said, scars are sexy, that's why I have one. This is the most I've gotten out of this man in 46 days of showering him with presents. So I celebrated by going to the mines for the rest of the day, saw a ginormous monster and got the heck out of there, sold my stuff and called it a day. Day 47, I accidentally made my duck egg into duck mayo, which was a mistake because I meant to give it to the goddess. Then I gave some regular mayo to Mark, and I've been kind of killing it where I've been guessing on most of the things he likes. Then I went to the mines for the rest of the day. I didn't cower away from the slimy monster this time, and I took it head on, and I stayed in the mines all day until I reached level 30. I got some more jammu, and I leveled up my mining. And I got a heart with Surya because I gifted him something. Day 48, and now that we're nearly halfway through, I decided to start talking to Mark even on days where I can't gift him. 
Didn't really go well, but I did get this very sweet and sad cutscene when I went into the Carpenters, and it was a love letter from Joko to Dinda, and it was about how they were going to spend their life together, grow old, and have their children, which unless I'm getting my family tree wrong, they actually don't have children, and all they have is Surya, who is their nephew, which led into this cutscene of Dinda asking Surya to fix their TV. I helped him, it nearly killed us, and this cutscene made me realize I have not been giving Surya enough attention. He is like the sweetest one and probably the guy I should end up with because he's the newest one to Coral Island other than me. He's a scientist and he even asked me to hang out with him after we fixed the TV together and I haven't seen Mark engaging in that behavior quite yet. After this, my heart was set once again on the mines, and I finished the mine today. I got to the bottom of the wind mine, which of course unlocked the final mine, the fire mine. I got to set free the wind giant, I got some more Jammu, and Chieftain told me I did a good job, and then I got to meet the cutest little wind giant, which their name was Gru. And then they told me that the fire mine was going to be the most dangerous one. And this one was special because we didn't actually have a statue for the mine. I got a heart with Sam and that was the day. Day 49, the crops are happening and I got to process my first ever fossil at the lab, which is pretty much the same mechanic as going to the blacksmiths for the geodes. And then I ran into Scott who was using Millie's computer in the library. She's the librarian, by the way. And he completely wrecked her computer. I told him to tell the truth. He said no. Then I realized I hadn't bought Dexter, my dog, an outdoor house. So I bought one. He still hasn't used it, but it's fine. Then I was in the mine to get more bronze because I started working on my next carpenter project. Day 50, we're halfway through. I upgraded my house to finally get a kitchen so I could cook the recipes I've been given. And speaking of giving, I gave Mark another gift and I got a new heart with him. So we're nearly there, I hope, to the romance, just a few hearts away. Then I went back to the ocean because I had been fully neglecting it. And I will say that as I'm in the deeper parts of the ocean now, it is getting much harder with my silver tool, but I don't have the materials to upgrade it and it is very hard to get those materials. So ocean is fun, but it's been taking a lot longer. And I did that the whole rest of the day and celebrated that heart I got earlier with Mark. Day 51, Paul asked me to chop a random ginormous log behind his house, as well as my grandma sent me some vitamins. So shout out to grandma. And then I ran into Mark. I gave him a burrito and found out he was the errand for today and he wanted some okra, which I had. So I gave that to him as well. And then I ran into Scott for one of the best cutscenes I've had in the game so far. And Scott needed help moving this couch in his house. And this scene is a total play on one of the most iconic scenes of Friends where they're trying to get a couch upstairs and Ross is telling everyone to pivot. So that was really cute to see in the game and it definitely made me want to prioritize getting to know the other characters and not just Mark even though I was on a mission. After I chopped the log that Paul wanted, I went and dove the rest of the day and I got some stuff done. I'm being productive with the diving. I'm trying to save the merfolk. I got merit points and a heart with Paul. Day 52 and my fruit trees are producing fruit, but I realized I made a grave error in not using fertilizer and I ruined my chance of being able to use this one particular fruit for the offering I needed. So that's on me, but then I realized I could change my farm building's appearance and I made them much cuter, it was worth the money, and then I went back to diving, which has been my new favorite way to kind of make money and collect resources, both for the museum and for the offerings as well. I did some progress there and I even leveled up. Day 53 in my house was upgraded to have an adorable kitchen, which is great because I've gotten quite a few recipes. So I tended to the farm and I went to socket and pan for the first time, walked right into a cutscene of Luke trying to sell the mayor a blender. I told the mayor to get a blender and then I myself bought a blender and also a frying pan. Now I know I could have Googled this information, but I've been doing this Google free. So I attempted to cook it went bad and then it went good. I made some smoothies successfully and that was good because I needed them for one of the offerings. And then it was time for me to make some money and progress. So I went to the fire mine and in the fire mine, there's this ore called osmium, which I knew 
sells for a lot of money. So I went home after a long day and made so much money. Day 54, I ran into Paul and Anne having a big fight because Paul forgot Anne's birthday. How could he? Then I made some progress donating to the museum and I was rewarded for my efforts, made some progress diving, and I have this big root that is still retreating, which is exciting to follow. I made the dehydrator and dehydrated some sea scavengeables for the first time. And then I went to the mine because I need money. I need money. And also I got some explosives and therefore I made some money. Day 55 was the beach cleanup festival, which was so much fun because I got to see everybody's swimsuits all in one place. So I talked to everybody and Kenny's swimsuit was the best one. Pufferfish was even here and they had a shop, which was interesting. And the regular shop, I did end up purchasing something today. I ended up buying a battery because I saw that you need it for the lab for some stuff. And then I lost really brutally in tug of war. And then I started out doing good on the swimming event, and then I lost that one too, because I lose the festival mini games. <laughs> but then after that, it was time for the main event, which for this one was pretty much just a cute little cutscene of people cleaning up the ocean. It was very wholesome. It was very cute. I see Mark right over there. And then Ling and I got to have a little moment together celebrating the fact that people were cleaning up the ocean. And super special, you can even see a merfolk in the water while we're talking uh, that I imagine nobody but us saw. So that was extra fun. And that was pretty much the whole day. I got some merit, I got some hearts, and we had another festival down. Day 56 was my first day in Mark's house. Can you believe I've gone 56 days and I did not think to actually go to his house? He's teasing me. We're, we're still not quite there in our relationship. That's fine. I went back to my farm and I made a lot of fertilizer because I knew fall was coming and I needed to prep my farm. So I spent the entire day tearing down the farm to make it somewhat ready for fall. And I hit so many rocks, I leveled up my mining. Day 57, the first day of fall, this dude, Bobby, who is a rival farmer, told me I'm going down in the Harvest Festival because my farm is trash. And my farm actually is trash. So trash that I restarted this entire day because I didn't use any of the fertilizer that I've made and I spent so much time on it. I almost restarted again because I accidentally made more duck mayo and didn't want to do that. Greeted Mark in his fall outfit, gave him a gift. And then I went to buy literally many seeds and I pretended this was my first time doing this. I got trees this time and you'll see I've doubled, tripled the size of our crops. I made scarecrows. I am here to farm this fall. I am not messing around and I got another heart with Mark. Day 58 and I have more farm to tend to in the morning. So things get a little bit of a slower start. But then I go to socket and pan and I get just a grill because I only have enough money for one utensil. And I grilled some barracuda, which I promptly gifted to Mark, who loved it. Then I went and gifted some things to the museum and did so many donations that I got some pumpkin seeds. Then I needed some more money, so I went to get some ore from the mines. And I also did some late night foraging and I gathered some hearts by gifting some items along the way. Day 59, I need sprinklers because watering the crops is killing me slowly and I am protecting my resources so I didn't want to upgrade my watering can. So I went to process some stuff for the blacksmith boys and I got an onyx which I remembered from early access is something Raphael liked. He had a really cute reaction and then I went diving because I need to make sprinklers. I met a buddy along the way and then guess what? I made sprinklers and I upgraded my farming. Day 60, the great sprinkler shortage continues. Then I went to go say hi to Mark who doesn't know it yet and you don't know it yet, but this is the season we fall in love. And I said hi to my backup boyfriend, Waku who I realize dyes his hair every single season. I knew about the summer, but the fall was so cute. Then I gave Paul some green tea to help him make up with his wife. And then I did some diving because again, I need to make more sprinklers and what I need is in the ocean. And also I'm trying to find the merfolk. I'm still, I'm still trying to find the merfolk, okay? So I got home with my new sprinklers and ended the day.
Day 61, and I got a hint from Mayor Connor about what I'm going to need for the upcoming Harvest Festival on the 15th, so I needed to get my crops in order, but first, I was still manually watering my crops because of the lack of sprinklers. Then I finally got a clue with Mark. He always talks about hot chocolate, so while I couldn't gift him on this day, I decided to start gifting him hot chocolate from now on and hope that it would do well. Then I spent the rest of the day cleaning up the ocean, which is pretty much my new full-time job in Coral Island. Day 62, I still have animals. I know I haven't been showing you them, but they're great. I love them. Then I have this cutscene with Millie that is just her saying she hates fish. That is it. That was the entire performance and the Oscar goes to. Now I donated my 100th item at the museum and I bet you can't guess what I did after. I bet you can't. Yes, I went diving. <laughs> <laughs> I continued diving, I made a buddy, I made a nice little friend, and then my ranch animals were so good that I got an upgrade and now I can make cheese. And Millie gave me a heart. Day 63, I made a cheese press and I had a lot of crops to harvest. And upgrading my seeds and using fertilizer was a great decision because I had really high quality crops. And this led me to realize my chests were an absolute disaster and today I should spend the day completely reorganizing. And my chests were a disaster because I kept waiting for upgraded better ones. I was interrupted by a cutscene with Charles and the children and the children were trying to convince Charles that Millie loves fish. But as we know, Millie does not like fish. So I decided to be a nice person and help Charles out and then I had to go. I decided to put most of the crops I had in the fridge. As you can see, I've been saving a lot of stuff because I've been running errands and also because I don't know what I'm gonna need anytime ever. Then I organized my chests outside as well. And at some point I realized that while I didn't have a upgraded wooden chest, I did have a stone chest I could use that could hold some more items as well. And this total renovation of my storage did take me an entire day, but I do think it was worth it. Day 64, the hot cocoa was a success. For the first time since the shiitake mushrooms in the beginning of the video, I found something he loved. Not something he liked, something he loved. Celebrated by buying myself a cow that I named Cloves. There she is, what a princess. And then I could taste the Murpho Kingdom. From early access, I knew it's literally back there. It's literally back there in the corner. We didn't make it there today, but we did upgrade our diving and we are on our way. Day 65 and the farming is going well. We really turned things around. And I made cheese for the first time. Things with Mark are also going well as the hot cocoa strategy was a good idea. Then I had this cutscene with Paul and Zoe and it's just them looking at the dancing crabs. Very sweet. Then I got to dancing in the ocean myself as I healed the final coral site before getting to go into the Merfolk Kingdom. This was my moment on day 65. I accomplished one of my biggest goals for the challenge and I made it to the Merfolk Kingdom. And oh my God, look how beautiful it was worth the hours and hours and hours I spent collecting trash. I finally made it and I was immediately attacked by a hot merfolk <laughs> and I was okay with it. They were worried. They didn't know who the heck I was, but they were both so hot. I, I just couldn't stop staring at them. My girl Denali came in to stand up for me, basically telling the merfolk guards that I can speak their language. They were like, okay, we got to talk to the king and queen. This sounds kind of crazy. So I met the king and queen and they were like, mm, I don't know. This sounds kind of crazy. And then I was defended by Cho, who is the oracle who let us know that there is a coral tree and the coral tree is kind of not doing well. So what if I go heal more of the ocean and maybe I could heal this coral tree? Wouldn't that be a good idea? Everybody was still on the fence, but then the princess came down and she also was another hot mermaid that I couldn't even pay attention to, but she was standing up for me. Then everyone decided I'm allowed to stay and not only am I allowed to stay, but I now have a place to sleep in the ocean if I wanna stay in the ocean overnight. I had to visit Cho and then I was told to go and explore the deep ocean. The deepest part of the ocean that I haven't been to yet. 
Before I went on my journey, the princess gave me a stamina fruit, which would increase my stamina, which, oh boy, was I going to need. Because as soon as I got in the deep ocean, I realized the trash is so much harder to clear. And this entire playthrough is brought to you by a silver scythe because I could not find a piece of a hardwood to upgrade to a gold scythe the entire playthrough. And I didn't want to Google it to find out how to get it. So slowly but surely, we cleaned some trash and we made our way in trying to explore the deep ocean. And while we did that, we caught a lot of different things and we upgraded. Day 66, I upgraded my regular axe to copper and I got to town on some of the larger pieces of wood that needed to go because I needed a large amount of wood for my next big project. But first I said hi to Mark, hey Mark. And then I made a shed. My farm was looking a little bit better and I wanted to hide my disgusting machines. Then I spent the rest of the day being in denial about the fact that I didn't have any hardwood. So I went and chopped trees all over the place. I gave Dexter an extra pet before bed and that was the day. Day 67, I had all of the items I needed for the fall offering for the goddess and she rewarded me with some barley seeds, which was super exciting and I planted those right away. Then I did some more cleanup on the farm, trying to get it to look somewhat okay. And then I decided to try something new and I dove, but I went to the caves in the ocean. There's actually a few different caves in the ocean and they're meant to kind of be like these treasure troves where you can get a bunch of fun stuff. I did get some coffers and some kelp, which was great, but I feel like diving through the ocean regularly did just kind of get me more stuff, but maybe I need to give it another go. Still, it gave me enough kelp that I was able to make my sprinklers, and that was a win. Day 68, my shed was done, and I could not believe how absolutely ginormous this shed was. So I moved all of my machines and I put them in there. I didn't put them in the most aesthetic order. I kind of was going for practicality here. I made some more machines because artisan goods are fun. And I think it's one of the best ways to make money in the game. And I've been enjoying it a lot. So once my shed was put together, I took a break to say hi to Mark, who still is mean to me. He's like still mean and doesn't love me yet. And I'm kind of getting a little over it and maybe considering other options. So I went home frustrated and I decorated my farm. Decorated my farm is what I did. Can you believe it? And then I got a heart with Mark and everything was right in the world again. It would be on day 69 that we unlocked love. I didn't realize that last heart I got with Mark meant it was time for romance. The blacksmith told me there was a locket that I needed to buy and that would initiate the romance. So you know, I ran to the blacksmith. I found Mark and he was scooping poop. And the command said propose. And I was like, okay, we are not getting engaged when you are scooping poop. And also like, I don't think I look cute. Like this isn't how it's meant to go. So I instantly ran away. I chickened out, I couldn't do it. I ran to the furniture store like a crazy person and I decided he can't move in. We can't get married until my place looks cute enough. So I spent 13,000 coins, all of my money to attempt to make the place suitable-ish for Mark. This is what I came up with. Ignore the floor. I fixed that later. Um, and that took all of my money. So I spent the rest of the day in the mines trying to make even more money so that I could get this ball rolling. Day 70, I have a wedding to fund, so mines. I also found Shrek. Hey, what's up? And I remembered I have explosives, which, wow, they make the mines so much easier, don't they? I made it to level 30. I got a ring. It's like they know I'm engaged. And I leveled up my mining and made a lot of money. Day 71 was the day of the harvest festival. So I had to get my crops in order to decide what I was going to bring. And I realized the festival actually was at night. So I had the whole day to do whatever I wanted, which was great because I had some important purchases to make. I had some plans for this evening. So I bought my wedding dress and then I did a little bit of home shopping because I needed my house to be 
even better than it was previously. So once again, I spent all of my money and I think the house ended up turning out pretty cute. Definitely not perfect, but definitely a lot better than before. I like it a lot. And then it was time for the festival. I was so nervous. I was so excited. There were so many things happening. As always, I started out by saying hi to everybody, including Mark, of course. And it was really nice to see everyone. Surya looked especially good in that jacket, but I was on a mission, played all the mini games. I was so bad at the smashing pumpkins one, but I ended up being a little bit better at the apple bobbing one. Um, I still struggle with the mini games, but I won second place, which was pretty cool. And then it was time for the main event. So I had to submit my crops. I needed to submit my best quality fruit. So I submitted the pumpkin. I needed to do my best quality vegetable. So I did the beet. I needed a best quality, best quality artisan. So I did the cranberry jam. I needed a barn item. So I did the wool from my sheep and a coop item. So I did a large egg. And then I also needed a flower and Half of my stuff was osmium, which is the highest quality you can get. So I was feeling pretty good, but I was nervous. I didn't know how strict this judging was going to be. And then I won only by a few points, but still I won this little farmer whose farm was so bad at the start of fall really did something and I worked my booty off for it. So I was so excited. They announced me as the winner and little pay was having the best day of her life. There was only one thing that could make it better today under the sparkling, beautiful lights, the fall harvest festival. I asked Mark if he would be my boyfriend and he said, yes. <laughs> And look, he's a blushing and he said, yes, I would love to get to know you better. And I didn't know what to do. I ended the day, got my merits, and then I got farming upgrades. And then, and then you're not, get ready. You're not even ready. Guess what happened? Boyfriend, boy, friend. I got hearts with other people, but Mark is now officially my boyfriend. Okay. So we're not married yet. I figured out, but this was the biggest step we've ever taken, and I could not wait for what was next. Day 72 started with an interaction from Yuri, who wanted to ask me some medical questions, but before she was able to do so, she dropped a photo of, very sadly, her cousin who passed away. So this was a kind of sad, but a really nice opportunity to get to know a little bit more about Yuri. Then my cow was sick, but I nursed her back to health, so it was fine. And then I gave my boyfriend some hot chocolate, as you do, you know, whatever. And then it was time to finish the fire mine. We've we've been had we've had this going too long. So with the help of some explosives, I made it to the bottom, got more explosives, found Chieftain, and we found the missing statue was right behind the whole time. And we got to meet the fire giant whose name is Gaiyu, and he's the cutest little dude. It turns out there was a whole big misunderstanding. Everyone thought this guy trapped all the other ones here, but really it's apparently another giant called Gort, who we have not met yet. The giants are like, okay, let's go back home and we'll figure this out. And that was the day. Day 73, I got a letter from Chieftain telling me to come to the giant village. And ironically, Jack sent me some animal medicine and let me know my animals could get sick. Even though I just found that out with my cow the other day, I made a keg for the first time and then my chicken was sick. Why the heck is everyone getting sick now? Luckily, I had that medicine and I nursed them back to health. And then I went over to the giant village, which we found out pretty much what I said in the last day that Caillou was not the culprit of the crime and it was someone named Gort. And Gort is not someone that lives here in Starla Town, but apparently they live somewhere in the Savannah. And the Savannah is actually not in the 1.0 version. So that means I have done all that I can do for the giants for right now. Then I decided to give some cookies to Mark and I finally got some new dialogue with him. And I loved this. They said his chuckle sounds like an earthquake. I absolutely loved that. Then I took a trip to the carpenter. I was looking at other stuff, but I noticed this. I needed to upgrade my house to enable marriage. And so that was my next goal. 
Day 74, I finished another bundle, which was great, and I was gifted a keg in return, and then the rest of the day I spent getting materials for my house upgrade. I needed silver bars and a lot of wood, and I was on my way. Day 75, I had everything I needed to upgrade my house and bring on the marriage, and then after that I needed to make more money, so I went back to the mines, as you do. And then when I got home, I made a beehive for the first time and increased my town rank to D, which meant I was going to get new seeds, new decor, new animals, and I was on my goal of getting to C rank before the 100 days was up. I also got merit points and hearts with all of these people. Day 76 and Chieftain came to my farm to thank me for all of my hard work and for my help. And to thank me, they gave me this magic desk that you can actually use to move things on your farm pretty easy. I didn't use it today, but I did set it up. And then I remembered that since we increased our rank, we would have new clothes. And I finally had the item I needed for the quest that the giants asked for much longer, much, much earlier in this video. And they wanted a disguise so that they could interact with the humans. So they put on the disguise and they called themselves handsome. And it looked pretty convincing. In fact, Mayor Connor believed it. They looked good. And now I had officially finished everything with the giants. Then I was back on the money grind. Today I did both the mines and I also dove. We changed it up today a little bit. I also sold some stuff and that was the day. Day 77 and I saw decorations for the upcoming spooky festival. Talk to Mark, no new dialogue or like dating stuff, but I'm holding out hope for when we upgrade our house fully. And I checked out the magic desk and it was too expensive, so I moved on. Day 78, I found some shiitake and gifted it to Mark to try to get him to love me more. And then I took back to the ocean and I actually made some progress in the deep ocean. And I finally found the sexy shrimp, which I thought I would never find and I needed it for an offering. So I was really excited to have it. Day 79, I give Mark an apple pie and I'm not really sure how this romance mechanic is working. I do still have hearts to get with Mark, but so far we haven't really done anything dating wise. So I took to the ocean and I did some more progress there, saving the coral, doing all the stuff. And then it turned out I did get a heart with Mark. So hopefully when my house does upgrade, we see some progress on the romance front. Day 80, I have not forgotten about the museum. I have been actively donating each and every single day. And today I got another reward and this reward was furniture. Now this furniture set didn't necessarily match the set I had already purchased, but I thought it would work and I just placed it. Then I decided to do some diving. I had a lot of things to sell and I leveled up. Day 81, my house was upgraded Mark wasn't here. I don't know why I've been delusional throughout this whole romance part of the game, but I did kind of think he would just be here. I do have one heart left with him though, so it is my mission to get that last heart, but in the meantime, I did completely redecorate. I have this whole upstairs area now, and pretty cool, I found out that you can actually have children, and you can have multiple children, so you can have different rooms for them, but for now, here is the bedroom. I don't know what I'm going to do with that back room quite yet. I think I'm going to make it like a plant room or something like that. And then I did the downstairs and then I spent the rest of my day diving because why not? Day 82, I bought a temperature machine to keep my animals cozy so they stop getting sick. I checked in with Mark. He doesn't want to move in yet, but that's okay. And then I have not forgotten about decorating my exterior of the farm more. So being that it's the last stretch of days, I wanted to really focus in on the goals I had left, like decorating the farm, of course, working on the romance with Mark, and then namely trying to get a C rank for my town. And that's why I've been diving so, so very much. I also really like it. It's been very satisfying. But this is the best way to increase my chance at getting a C rank before the 100 days is up. Day 83, Mark, museum, diving. But today we met a shark and that's pretty much it. Day 84 was the last day of fall and I walked into a cutscene between Bree and Walter with no information, just them arguing about not wanting to go someplace. 
then because I realized it was the last day of fall and I knew all of this grass dies during the winter, I decided to cut as much of it as I could to use it for hay. And then later at night, it was time for the spooky festival. So of course I had to say hi to everyone, but a little bit of a bummer, no one is dressed up yet. This is something that's going to be implemented in the game later. So people were talking about costumes, but weren't actually wearing them. And then I got started on the mini games, which you know I am bad at, but I did third, which was better than Mark's fourth place. So I'll take it as a win. And then the ring toss was so fun, but very difficult. And I thought that I was gonna come in last for this one too, but I didn't. I also came in third for this one and once again beat Mark. He kind of stinks at these. There was also a scavenger hunt going on around. So I found all of the items and was rewarded with a diamond. And then it was time to start the main event, which was this really adorable parade. And I love the little parade floats so very much. Seeing all the people was so wholesome, so cute. I cannot even imagine what it's gonna be like when everybody is in costume and we get to wear a costume. I can't wait. And that was the day. I got some merit and I got lots of hearts with lots of people. Day 85, and once again, Nina's life decisions let us know it's a new season. And so it was the first day of winter. I got another temperature machine for my cows, and I saw Mark's winter outfit, which is my favorite out of all his outfits, and I gave him some beer that I made, and he liked it. Then I said hi to Connor, and I took a look at what I needed for the winter offerings. I had nothing. Worked on my farm, and then I said hi to Ben, who I had this cutscene with and he has a pet duck that is sick and it was sad and also cute, but sad. And then I did some late night foraging. I found a ghost in the woods that dropped this pear for me for some reason. And then I decided that bug catching was good to do during the winter because you can see better. Day 86 and I've decided Paul is a mess after this cutscene where he needed to get fresh vegetables, but instead just decided to pluck things from the ground. And I gave Mark a shiitake, and for the first time, he actually said some nice things. He didn't seem mean. Still doesn't seem like he's totally in love with me yet, but we're working on it. We only have a few days left, but I went diving, and I healed some coral, but didn't get super far. Day 87, Mark either just really likes me, or he really likes the winter. I think it might be the latter, but regardless, nice to see him happy. I killed it with the coral today, and I saved this sea dragon beautiful creature person. And I'm not gonna lie, I have been very delusional, but I did think this was like the end. I was like, oh, okay, great. I saved the whole ocean, amazing, cool, cool, cool. I don't know why I thought this dragon like was the final thing I needed to find, false. And as soon as I saw what was coming next, I knew just how much bigger the ocean really was. I discovered that there's osmium kelp. And I haven't seen osmium kelp before, which means there is other huge areas I have not been to yet. So I'm not so confident that I could conquer the ocean by the time the 100 days is over. Day 88, and I donated enough to the museum to get snowdropsies, which is good because I needed them for the winter goddess offering. So I planted them, but I wasn't feeling so confident that they would grow in time because I also planted wild seeds and they haven't grown yet. Mark had some new dialogue about visiting Raphael, which I thought was so fun. Um, and then I did some foraging before you know where I went. I went to dive a little bit and then I unlocked more foraging. Day 89 was all about Mark even more than usual. I got some new dialogue with him when I first said hi to him, which was giving me hope that the romance is still alive. And while I thought about him all day, I decided to decorate my farm a little bit. And oh my goodness, grass tiles are expensive. Then I ran into the, one of the first cutscenes I had today, and this one was about Frank taste testing different new drinks for the bar, but he purposely made them bad so he didn't have to change his mom and dad's original menu. Cute, that was that. Moving on to the most dramatic cutscene I had in my 100 days, and I could not breathe during this encounter, but Mark was sitting at the bar all by himself, until a little farmer pay walked in 
And he was like, I want to drink by myself. And so I sat and he was like, yeah, of course you would sit. And he asked me if I remembered the stray dog he found. Then he said, of course you do. You're everywhere nowadays. And he pretty much told me what happened. He was trying to help the dog and she got really sick and he feels really bad about it. But what he feels the most bad about is the dog was rejecting the food and he was like trying to force her to have it. And he said this isn't the first time he's done something like that. And he told me this tragic backstory about the band of smiles having another trainee who was coming along upside with him. And this kid, Drake, and him didn't get along. And Mark, like, teased him, like, said he didn't deserve to be there. And this other guy was really proud. And he decided to go up against a big monster. And he didn't make it back. And it was all Mark's fault. And, oh, my goodness, I felt so bad for him. He wanted to be alone. But luckily, my character gave him, like, a nice little, like, pat on the back or, like, a hand on the shoulder. And it was kind of the most touching moment we've had together and the most I've gotten to know about him so yikes what a story but I'm really glad to have had the cutscene and gotten to develop a little bit more and then the rest of the day I decorated and somehow got a heart with Scott. Day 90 I was less confident in achieving the remaining goals I had left so I took fate into my own hands and worked on the thing I could control myself which was the farm decor. Now I've already done a little bit of decorating, but not really that much. So I decided to give my animals a nice dedicated space. While the grass won't grow right now because it's winter, I wanted to give them a nice space where whenever I would let them out, they could graze in one designated location without me having to worry about them going all over the place and causing chaos. And I think it came out really cute. And I think it looks really pretty in the winter, especially right now. And then after that, I took a break to say hello to Mark. Again, we're getting some new dialogue from him. So I was very excited about that. He was talking about writing his mom. And then this one, edgy. He was saying that his scar in his face doesn't hurt anymore. But do you think I'd be less miserable if I hadn't gotten attacked? And then he said, I don't think so. And that was it. That was it. Edgy. Okay. Day 91 started with some decorating and then went right back to Mark. I'm sorry. I just wanted to get married before the 100 days. He mentioned egg custard and I forgot that was one of his favorite things. I don't know how to make that yet, but I will. And then he said teasing. Don't be mad, please. Are we are we finally flirting, my boyfriend? Are we finally doing it? And then a compliment. The fanciest and only farmer he knows. I'll take it. It's a step in the right direction. Then we got into this cut scene where he calls me pay for the first time instead of garden rake. Well, actually, I think he's called me pay before, but not in the cutscenes. And then we're here to pick up the stray and Kenny is being all crazy. And Mark is like, well, what happened? And Kenny absolutely messed up. Remember that cutscene way earlier in the video I told you to remember? Well, remember it now. He lost the dog. He literally lost the dog. The, he left the door open, the windows were open, and the dog escaped. And he said, oh, never in my years of being a ranger has this happened, never. Um, remember when your cow ran away and I had to help you? Okay. And Mark, instead of wanting to fight Kenny, he was like, this is all my fault. I'm so sad. And he ran away to go look for her. And I ran away from my emotions into the ocean to dive some more to see if I could make some more progress before the days were done. And I did upgrade my diving, which was great. Day 92, it was one of my last chances to gift Mark, gave him some beer, and he liked it. But it was when I talked to him again that I got my final heart and he was actually nice. He said if I ever need help with farm work, just ask and that he is around. And I lost my mind. And then this screwed me up. He was like, oh, the curly brown dog you see is mine. Well, ours. And I thought he meant like me and him. I thought like Bon Bon is our dog now. No, it's it's his nieces. But I got a little too excited. Then I ran into another cut scene. I ran into one from Dinda and Joko, the carpenters, and they were talking about puffer fish, which hasn't been brought up that much, to be honest. And they were really annoyed that they just came into town. And then they started kind of turning the conversation on their son, 
who didn't want to eat breakfast. They were making pancakes and their son Archie just like wasn't in the mood. And so then they were complaining that like maybe something was wrong with him. Like maybe something was going on. I think maybe he just didn't want to hear you guys complaining and he didn't want the pancakes. Then this was a total accident. This, this was, I didn't mean to see this. I didn't mean to see this. I didn't mean to see this. I went to the blacksmith. I go every day to process geodes and stuff. I saw the diamond ring and I did not know what to do with it. But luckily I didn't have to think because I ran into another cutscene. And Mark was once again looking for the dog and he was very distraught. He was stinky, so stinky that he had a pile of smoke, a pile of stank. I don't know, following him. Because he has been looking for this dog nonstop where he has not even showered and somehow none of this bothered me. But he was excited to keep looking for the dog. That's all he wanted to do. And so I let him do it. And the universe, aka the Coral Island recap, told me that I got my final heart with Mark. And oh boy, I already know. Day 93 was the day the blacksmiths let me know that a diamond ring was available for purchase as if I didn't know. So I ran, I ran, I got my diamond ring and I ran and I needed to find Mark instantly. And of course, once again, he was scooping up poop. Every time I have an important question to ask him, he is scooping up poop. But this time I was not going to chicken out. Except I did. I stood here for a long time and I was like, oh my God, is this how I'm going to propose? Is this, is this the moment? Do I want this proposal to be while he is scooping poop? After the 93 days we've spent together, after the agony I've gone through in gifting him. So I decided to just like mess around and then wait for him to stop scooping the poop. And then I was going to do it because he loves animals so very much. And this has been our bonding thing. So why not propose in the animal shelter? And he said I was in a spot which was so fitting for him. And then I did it. And, um, and he said, no, I, I was in denial. So I came back later. I gave him a shiitake mushroom and I was like, okay, let me give him, let me butter him up. <laughs> and then let me ask again. I have the maximum of hearts. I upgraded my house and he said no. So then I hate to admit this. When I bought the locket to ask him to be my boyfriend, I actually bought two. So I decided for science to see what would happen if I decided to ask out my backup boyfriend. And that's that's what I did. And uh, he also rejected me. So then I went to my backup, backup boyfriend boyfriend and he rejected me too so i went to bed day 94 and love isn't real but you know what is shopping so i got a bag because that will solve all my issues and then i got some decor because well, it looks like I'm not getting married, but at least I can decorate my farm, I guess. So I did that. I did some decor and I just tried not to think about the events of yesterday and how different I thought things were gonna go. Um, and I made a cute little area around my shed and it's, it's so cute. I don't know why someone wouldn't want to live in this vicinity because it's really cute. And then I cleaned up, even though I can't decorate the entire, entire farm, I can at least like clean up the trash. Like you've had 94 days. Why is there still trash on the farm? So I thought it was about time I cleaned some stuff up. Day 95, I give it another chance and I propose to Mark again. And he said no, again. So back to the trash I went and then I realized Dexter is the only guy I can depend on. And that is it. Day 96, Mark said no to my proposal again, but then it was cutscene day. First with Pablo and Raphael, Pablo asking his brother to go play pool with him at the tavern and then completely ignoring him because Pablo is the cool guy, everyone wanted to play pool with him and no one noticed Raphael. 
and it was really sad. And then I also got this one with Sonny and his son that was pretty short. It was just Sonny picking up his son from school and it was really wholesome. And I'm not gonna lie, I definitely spent the last couple days just running everywhere trying to get as many cutscenes as possible. Day 97, I spent diving, making my final attempts to try to raise my overall town rank from D to C, but also I needed to de-stress. There have been failed proposals, there have been heartbreak, there have been lost puppies, and I just wanted to clear some trash. And day 98, I pretty much spent the exact same way. Day 99, another go at it with Mark and another rejection. So I retreated to the ocean, but I found some really cool places that I had not been before. Day 100, and I gave Mark one last gift. It was some cranberry jam and he really, really liked it. And he actually had some sweet dialogue of telling me to bundle up for the winter, which was really cute. And while our romance did not go as far as I wanted as he rejected me one final time via proposal, I knew there was stuff to come in the future. I decided to dive a little bit more, knowing I wouldn't be able to heal all of the coral, but healing some was good enough for me. And then I remembered I'd been gaining merit points this entire time and I've never used them. So I got a farming elixir and a diving elixir, two of my very favorite parts of the game that I wanted to increase. I gave Dexter a pet goodnight and that was 100 days in Coral Island. You made it, thank you for making it to the end. I gotta know what you thought down below. I know what I thought. I know I didn't hit all of my goals, but I got very close for quite a few of them, especially the ones I didn't actually achieve. Mainly though, I did have a really good time. Obviously, I spent a lot of hours playing Coral Island for this video. I don't regret a second of it. I had so many laughs, so many screams of joy, so many exciting moments that happened throughout my gameplay, and it's not over yet. I'm going to be continuing with Coral Island here on my channel. I gotta get Mark to marry me. So like, it's not done yet. But if you want to stay along the journey, please be sure to click the lovely little like button and subscribe for more cozy, chaotic content. Leave me your thoughts and comments below. Thank you again to Stairway Games for giving me a bit early access to the 1.0 build. I will see you guys in the next one and bye bye.